Folks, in the first part of this video series, we talked about Aquarium KH and why it is so important to our tanks. In part two, we're gonna talk about how to test your tank for KH and the approximate level your tank's KH should be. Hint, it's gonna depend a lot on the fish that you're keeping. That's coming up right now. As a recap, in the first video of this series, we talked about KH and there's an analogy that I like to use that KH is like your tank's ozone layer. It protects our tank's pH from acidic nitrates and that KH prevents those acidic nitrates, always in our tank, from reaching our pH, lowering it and causing pH drops or swings. With KH being important, of course, we need to be able to measure our KH tank level. And for that, I like to use from the good folks at API, their GH and KH test kit. Now this happens to be the combo kit. You can buy these separately. And we'll get to general hardness in another video series. Of course, right now we're gonna stay focused on the KH. I do like the liquid test kits. I like these test kits also for measuring pH, ammonia, nitrites, and nitrate. And I have a test tube, five milliliters of aquarium water. And we're gonna start putting drops of the KH solution into this test tube. Now you might notice there aren't any color charts that come with this kit. And that's because the level of your KH is gonna be measured by how many of these drops you put in the water. Now you'll notice as soon as I have two drops in the water, it starts to turn blue. What we're looking for is for this water to turn yellow. And once it turns yellow, whatever drop number we're on, we're gonna stop and that is the level of KH in our tanks. Now that drop level does correspond to a certain PPM number and I'll show that to you here in a second. Measuring this drop by drop is a little bit tedious and you can put a few drops into the water and then tip the test tube but for the purposes of the drop count on this video, I am doing it drop by drop. I also wanna make sure that if any of that KH solution slides down the glass, I'm picking that solution up as well. Now here is drop count number seven. And again, that water is still blue, so we still are not at our KH level. Here comes drop number eight. Now once this is in the water and this is capped, you'll notice when I tip the test tube over, now it turns yellow. So the KH of my water is eight or between seven and eight. And that number of eight corresponds to about 100 to 200 ppm. That is the measurement of my KH, that's the range. Now I'm also gonna test my pH in this video because I do wanna show you that it's no coincidence that my pH and KH are related. And here's the relation. On a relative scale, my KH is about in the middle. And on a relative scale of pH, my pH is about in the middle and that's no coincidence. As I mix this up, you'll see, and I know it's a little bit hard to see in the lighting, my pH runs about 7.4. I'm right in the middle of the pH scale and I'm right about in the middle of the KH scale as well. So now that we know how to measure KH, what level should the KH be in your tank? Well, that's gonna largely depend on what type of fish you are keeping. Are you keeping fish that like more acidic, softer water or fish that like harder water? Now here's the insert that comes along with the API kit. You can see I'm right in the middle with my eight drops. I did retype this insert here. I know it's a little bit hard to see, so here is a better view. The point I'd like to drive home about the relation between pH and KH is that if you have the appropriate pH for the type of fish you're keeping, and I do at 7.4, my KH is right in the middle. If I wanted to lower my pH, say to 6.5, so I could keep discus, neons, or cardinals, I'd have to first lower my KH in order to lower my pH. And vice versa, if I were keeping discus and my pH was 6.5 and I wanted to raise that to keep swordtails and guppies that like a higher pH, I would have to first raise my KH in order to be able to raise my pH. And that's the relation between KH and pH. KH and pH levels either need to move together or they need to remain together on their same respective general levels. This is why it was no coincidence that my pH is right in the middle of the pH scale and my KH is right in the middle of the KH scale. Where we run into problems is that if our KH drops below where our pH is on those general scales, we start running into problems. Now the acidic nitrates can get to our pH, causing the pH sudden drops or swings that are so toxic to our fish. So in general, if you have the right KH level in proportion to your pH level, 
If you have a lower pH, you should expect to have a lower KH level. If you have a higher pH, you should have a higher KH level. But keep in mind, KH levels can drop and will drop over time, so we need to monitor them. After all, it is our KH that's our ozone layer protecting our pH from acidic nitrates and the pH swings that are toxic to our fish. So what level should your KH be in your tank? Well, if you're keeping fish that like softer, more acidic water at a lower pH, you're going to have a lower KH. And if you are keeping fish that like harder, more alkaline water at a higher pH, you're going to have a higher KH. But we never want our KH to proportionally drop much lower than our pH level. In the next video in this series, we're going to talk about how to raise your tank's KH and how to lower your tank's KH. It'll be especially important to raise your tank's KH if it's dropping proportionately low to where your pH is. Folks, I hope that video was helpful. Please like, comment, subscribe for future content, and as always, thanks for watching.